speaking to Erica Pearl. Erica is a children's book author and reading expert, and today she's going to try and help us figure out how to guide our older children and our independent readers through book choices. Right. Erica. Welcome, Erica. Yeah, <laughs> like Thanks that's possible. I've been waiting with bated <laughs> breath for this topic. Please tell me what to do. Well, there's a lot at play here because as kids become independent readers, you've got so, as many different styles of readers as you have kids. You have mm -hmm. some kids who are chomping at the bit and eating up everything you put in front of them, some right. kids who are reluctant readers or who will only read one kind of thing. As there's... you guys know very well, what's really important is to help your kids find books that work for that particular kid. Uh, so I'm going to whip through some book suggestions okay, and for a, a very wide range of independent readers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've got books here for early independent readers, for kids who we are... Have all of those. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Captain Underpants. We have Diaper I Baby. I do love them. Yeah. yeah. You know, I have Dave to Pilkey's tell you great. that I couldn't get past the covers of these books. <laughs> they are. I, didn't, I could not buy these for my children. <laughs> they are out there. The titles are wacky. And See, and I have a different philosophy. Yep. I'm like whatever gets them to read. Now, yeah, I, I probably am not right, making the right choice because I'm, Gretchen's kids I'm more in line, line with, with that page, but it does run you into trouble later on. Mm -hmm. So you definitely have to figure out what works for your family. For us, you know, we love Captain Underpants and it's sort of have running jokes from them. Baby Mouse is another really good graphic novel series for younger kids because mm -hmm. there's, there's fewer words per page, there's a lot of action. Very appealing to girls, but there's stuff for boys too. There's actually okay. a new one out that's orange, so you don't have to deal it's with those, pink the pink and it has covers. A heart, yeah. But it's got the pink heart and everything. And Baby Mouse is this sort of sassy, uh, middle middle school aged mouse, oh. but she doesn't get into anything that's too you know heavy in terms okay. of content. Okay, so those are those I'm two. I'm gonna have to check that out for Lola. Yeah. Um, Kids this age, as you know, as kids begin to become independent readers, they love series books. So mm -hmm. Magic Treehouse and mm -hmm. Jenny B. Jones, whatever favorite. you yeah. mm -hmm. feel about Nate her. The Nate, mm -hmm. Nate the Great. Yeah. Any books in which the same character gets into all sorts of adventures. Well, you know, when we were kids, it was like Beverly Cleary, right? Right. It was and like those are still Ramona great. Quimby. And I did Tr you know? Trixie Belden is what yeah. I read. Yeah. Um, and Artemis Fowl is mm -hmm. a series that Avery's reading now that he loves. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of fun if you have kids who are into those mm -hmm. books to just keep getting them and keep right, encouraging right. them. You can sometimes run into a wall when the books end, and it's sort of like, where do I go right. next? I, I remember bawling my eyes out for like a half an hour when I finished Caddy Woodlawn. Yeah. Well, like, if I lost my best friend. Yeah. Like, yeah. that would have been great if yeah. there had been a sequel. But then, you know, there's the Little House books that sort of play on the same time period yeah. as Caddy, and so there are books that kind of exist that are, you can steer yourself into or steer your child into as right. they get into that. These are some more serious books. But what's fun about these books is they work really well for sort of 8 to 12 year olds and they mm -hmm. work for boys as well. Even though this is a book called Lucy Rose and it's mm -hmm. about a girl, one of her best friend uh, slash arch enemies is a boy and mm -hmm. he's actually getting his own series very soon. Okay. So boys who try, the, uh, who try this book will like what they find and then will find more books okay. to mm -hmm. go off that. Um, Piper Reed is also a really fun one. This is about a girl whose dad is in the Navy, uh -huh. and so it also is kind of a fun book because there's a sort of a timely tie-in to kids who are dealing with their families military. being at war, oh, military issues. Yeah. And That's this is, I believe, that. the second in this series. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so going on from there, another fun thing to do with kids is books uh, like The Tale of Despero that have sort of a classic feel. It's a wonderful read aloud, okay. and it's a really good book to, you know, for kids who are independent readers and can handle it alone, but mm -hmm. even for kids who are at a point where they're really picking their own books, it's got great characters, you mm -hmm. can do fun voices if you're inclined, mm -hmm. and you can really have a good time reading it to them, and you'll kind of keep older kids interested in the read aloud because it's got a really classic story feel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, speaking of read alouds, I brought along the read aloud handbook, which is really a nice guide guide that Jim Trillies is, is a total guru in terms of reading aloud okay. and he has great suggestions. There's lists and lists of books. So if you're trying to find a good book for a kid, mm -hmm. it, it will remind you of books that you've forgotten about from your childhood and okay. it will also introduce you to books and give you an idea of the content before you bring them home and mm -hmm. toss good them idea. out there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there are some websites also that are really handy. If you've got a book that you know, you're wondering about whether it's appropriate for your child, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, Google it. So when you've got this a child who happens to be an early advanced reader Yes, mm -hmm. and you're trying to find books that will challenge him on that level, but yet still be age appropriate. Right. Yes, that is the hardest, I think, when well, you have that discrepancy. Well, one thing that you you had said to me, and I think is a great thing to mention mm -hmm. to parents, is that a lot of times you can there are kind of new re envisionings of classic material right. where you're going to know that you're dealing with a story that's that's familiar and that has 
carried mm -hmm. through the ages, but it will be like a graphic novel version or will right. be an expanded something. There the are versions junior of, greats or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. there are beautiful illustrated versions of Beowulf, of The mm -hmm. Hobbit, True. of all sorts of books like that. <laughs> yeah. They'll have illustrations that will assist a reader right, that's right. running into trouble with any of the... Like the Knights of the Round Table yeah. and that type mm -hmm. of thing, which for boys, because I have two boys, I mean, yeah. it was all about swords Anything with and, fighting and honor. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I particularly, I love, I brought this along because um, my girls love this, mm -hmm. but boys love oh, it too. Matt the illustrated so Greek myths. myths right now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, there's great stuff there. And also the ology books. The we ology did, books are great. These, these books are awesome. They're we really a lot of fun, and they uh -huh. work for kids on a lot of different mm -hmm. levels. I mean, very little kids just find them fascinating because right. there's so much going on in them. And then older kids, they can really kind of feel like they, they're looking at a beautiful illustrated volume that just mm -hmm. takes them well into right. topics they're obsessed it, with. They yeah. remind me of these books when I was a kid. Do you remember the gnome books? Yes. I love yeah. those. And yeah. the, and the uh, fairies and the gnomes. Mm -hmm. I had those two series yeah, of books. Yeah, exactly. And the ology books. You know, we have pirateology, we mm -hmm. have princessology and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, the so. spiderwick books also <laughs> kind yes. of go in that same direction yes. where you're looking at this... Uh, these the imagined world. creatures, but they're doing it with the that kind of cataloging of detail. Are really, yeah, I yeah. love that. I love that. Yeah, yeah. I think that's well, fascinating. Well, thank you so much for being here. This has been great. Thank you for having me. For more information <laughs> on Erica Pearl and reading with your children, visit our website, mommycast.com. Some, um, of some of the Greek myths can be a little questionable. <laughs> they, I was going to say, sometimes <laughs> they it's hard to those. figure out, but <laughs> yeah. uh, I usually, if, I, if I'm talking with my kids after reading the Greek mm -hmm. myths, and I usually find that they are able just to, to separate out yeah. what's real and what's not. And if mm -hmm. you say, do you think the message of that story was really to kill your mother? Yeah. Right. You know, they will say, no, that wasn't, you know, but you don't understand, Thankfully, mom. that's what they say. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah.